Hi, and welcome to today's training video brought to you by Category Management Knowledge Group. This week's tip has been created by us to teach you how to think through a basic set of data to find business opportunities. This is a skill that's beneficial for everyone in category management, sales, or marketing. The example I'm going to use today is a basic category review, but what I'm going to show you applies to many different types of data. If you don't understand the basic methodology of what we call drilling down, or if you're not looking at the right measures in your report, you may be drawing incorrect conclusions from the data, resulting in missed opportunities, or focus on the wrong priorities. In case you don't know about Category Management Knowledge Group, let me tell you a few things. I'm Sue Nichols, the president and founder of CMKG. I spent 20 years at P&G, ultimately managing the Canadian Category Management Team and serving on global category management committees. I started this company over 10 years ago and started out in category management consulting. At that time, I had the opportunity to work with many different retailers and suppliers from around the world, running category management training. I really saw the opportunity to move to something where we could create training that was more accessible to organizations instead of it only being available in a live format. Michelle is the Director of Training and Development and also started her career with 12 years at P&G, both in category management as well as sales, trade marketing, and 10 years as a corporate trainer. The biggest distinction between CMKG and other e-learning competition is that we're category management professionals first. In fact, we're all certified and an e-learning company second. We have a huge passion in what we do and feel very privileged to work with so many professionals in the retail and supplier chain. We offer accredited courses and programs that all relate to category management for individuals, teams, and organizations, including a retailer stream with many options and flexibility to create custom blended learning solutions. Our training is applicable to different functions, including sales and marketing and experience levels in both retail and manufacturing organizations both in North America and globally. So let's get started on the official part of the training. In today's session, we're gonna go through and take some data and pull some insights on it based on a basic category review. Following this session, next week, I'm gonna be creating one that turns it into action by tying in with the tactics. I hope that you enjoy it and hope you'll give feedback after the session to let me know if you found it valuable. And if you do, we always appreciate it if you share your thoughts with others in the industry. So we're going to start with a category assessment as a category manager that works for Retailer X. The category manager wants to understand what's happening in their category, identify where their issues are stemming from, and then create an action plan to fix the issues. So here's Retailer X's top line category report. It's the latest 52 weeks for total category and for some different manufacturers. You can see the variables that are included in the report here. Each of these variables is important to understand in order to really understand the business. You might want to stop the player right now in your video and review the results on the page. Determine what numbers do you think would be your biggest areas of concern. So in this example, the category is down 2% versus year ago, driven by manufacturers number two and number four. So you might think that these are your biggest opportunities. But it's important to look at the absolute volume change to really understand who's driving the decline. The absolute change tells me how much volume I'm gaining or losing in actual sales. But when you look at the absolute change, you can see that in fact it's number two and number one, based purely on dollar sales lost in the latest 52 week time period. Many times there are missed opportunities or focus on the wrong areas because of simple misinterpretation of basic data. Market share tells me how I'm performing in the total market, really versus competition. So in this example, Retailer X represents 7.2% of total market sales in this category. Do you think this is a good or a bad development for this retailer? Actually, you can't even really tell that right now without some kind of benchmark, which we're not going to get into in this example, but they definitely need to have benchmarks to compare against, whether it's similar categories or to their ACV share. They can also compare that 7.2 share for category and look down the manufacturers to determine who the most 
and least developed manufacturers are within this category. As you can see, it's the control label that has the highest market share development at an 11.6. So Retailer X represents 7.2% of total market sales and lost 0.2 share points in the category, driven by manufacturer number two, who lost 0.7 share points, indicating that they're slightly behind the market growth in the category. Next, category share tells me the importance of each manufacturer in the category. For example, manufacturer number one represents 43.5% of dollar sales in the category. When you compare their category share to the rest of the manufacturers, you can see that they're the share leader in the category, with manufacturer number two coming in second with a 26.7 share. So I have a top line understanding of what's going on in the category and by manufacturer for retailer X. It's also valuable to understand volume results from a tonnage perspective which I've added into this table. If tonnage is growing at a faster rate than dollar sales, it means that the category is deflating, which is not a good thing. In this example, tonnage is declining at a faster rate than total dollar sales. So this category is not deflating. The next step is to understand things from a segment perspective. In this category, the biggest consumer decision is on age group with a family, adults, and kids section. Once again, you should stop the video and take a look at these results on this page as a category manager and try to identify some of the key numbers of concern in this report. We already know that the category is down 2% versus a year ago. What segments are driving that negative 2%? I can look across the segments to see who's driving it. This includes the family segment down 4% and the kids segment down 3%. As I mentioned before, it's always important to look at absolute volume change. You can see that the decline of 1% in adult segment translates to negative 306 in sales, which is a significant amount of volume loss. Of note, the adult segment is the largest segment in the category. So all three segments have declined over the latest 52 weeks, translating to almost $1.8 million driven primarily by the family segment, but with all three key segments down. The next thing that retailers need to understand as a category manager is what segments are you are most and least developed in. So in this example, retailer X is least developed in the adult segment and most developed in family and the kids segment. The last thing to notice is the largest segments in the category. So which segment is the largest for the retailer? Adult segment. Also, remember from our previous slide that manufacturer number one, here's something else to consider. You should look at another time period so that you can understand if the minus 2% decline in 52 weeks is trending up or down in shorter time periods. So now we're looking at latest 24 weeks. Take a look at these results for a minute by pausing your video player and then come back with some of your observations. You can see that the total category is down 6% driven by declines in all three segments. Each with significant volume loss that totals more than $2 million. And this amount is higher than the loss for the latest 52 weeks. So it's important to consider more than one time period to truly see the trends and if the issues are more short-term or long-term and fix them short-term before they become a long-term issue. So based on this, we're gonna focus the rest of our analysis on the latest 24 weeks of data so we can really dissect it to understand what's driving these results. So based on this latest 24-week information, it's really manufacturer number one and two that are driving the negative results across family and adult segment. And number two driving results is the kids segment. So once again, if you were only looking at percent change versus a year ago, you may focus all your efforts on the family and kids segment. But we know that the adult segment volume is significant and they're underdeveloped in that segment. You'll also notice that the adult segment now has a 6.8 market share. If you'll recall, Retailer X had a seven share in the latest 52 weeks. So this is the least developed segment for the retailer, and it's also the largest segment. And now the share is sliding even more. Now we wanna break out our volume results into baseline and incremental sales if we have access to this data. This is where you can really get into some compelling insights about the data, and it's a really underutilized set of data measures for many organizations. If you're not familiar with baseline and incremental sales, baseline sales are the normal expected volume week to week for a product, brand, or segment. 
Baseline sales are modeled based on anticipated sales and they would have sold without any type of promotional activity. Incremental sales are the ones that wouldn't have happened without some type of promotion or price reduction. By breaking out the results into baseline and incremental sales, you can start understanding even the tactics that are driving the overall volume results more easily. I'm going to be going into more detail about baseline and incremental sales as well as their drivers in my tip next week. Once again, I suggest that you pause this presentation, review the data results, come up with your own observations, and then hit play again and see if your observations match mine. So in this category, the baseline sales are down 4% and the incremental sales are down 10%. So you may interpret this is that the incremental sales are driving down the category results. But if you look at the absolute volume change for baseline and incremental, you can see that in fact baseline sales are down more than incremental sales. And this is because 77% of the category sales are sold on baseline and 23% are sold incrementally. So a 4% decline in baseline translates into much more sales than a 10% decline in incremental sales. I've highlighted the segments where the absolute volume declines are the greatest. Once again, you can see that the biggest declines are in manufacturers number one and two for family and adult. But family decline is in baseline sales, while adult is in both baseline and incremental sales. Also, the kids segment for manufacturer number two is declining primarily in incremental sales. You'll note that manufacturer number one in kids is also in decline, but this hasn't been highlighted as as big of a priority because it's up in baseline sales. So now that I've established all of these things that are going on within the category, I need to capture my key observations from the data, including the insights from tying in with baseline and incremental sales results for the category. This is really important to do to capture the key priorities that you see and some of the focus areas for the rest of your analysis because it really becomes your guidelines for where you want to start drilling in to understand the tactics or the four P's. We're going to get into details on drilling into the tactics or four P's using the same case study in next week's tip. So that's it for today's tip. I hope that you found this drill down methodology helpful. All of the examples I shared with you come from teachings in many of our courses, starting with understanding and using data and completing a category assessment. Once again, they're available online. Regardless of if you're looking for industry certification in category management, or if you just want to take some great training, our accreditation confirms that our training meets or exceeds industry standards. You can choose to take one course as a quick fix need for a project, select a group of courses to create a customized program specific for you, or you can take one of our many programs with different options available to you. We've combined courses to create different course groupings based on role and what it is that you're trying to accomplish in your unique training program, whether you're in category management, sales or marketing, if you're trying to attain industry certification, or if you want a full site license approach with access to all the courses. Of note, we can also customize programs for our corporate clients to include blended learning and customized elements in the program. If you're interested in learning more about CMKG courses and programs, here are some suggested next steps. If you've enjoyed the video from this blog post, I really encourage you to share it with your social media avenues using the buttons at the top of my blog page and with your peers. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video and I encourage you to venture down your path of continuous learning.